This week, we're talking about the VR stuff from Sony State of Play event on Thursday. We're talking about another Steam Deck delay and more. So let's just go ahead together as a people and take it out. Welcome to another Sensational Sunday. Happy Pride Month. I'm Mike and I'm here to talk about the gaming news. So let's just hop right into it today. We're going to go ahead and recap the VR stuff from the State of Play event. I'm not going to cover everything because for me the most interesting stuff was the VR stuff. So let's just get this out of the way first. We didn't get any kind of release date for the PSVR 2, like a firm release date which I was kind of hopeful, but oh well, I mean, we did get some cool games, so let's talk about it. So they started off the show with Resident Evil 4 Remake, which technically wasn't a VR showcase at all, it was just showing the game. And then at the very end of the trailer, they just slapped it up and like, and some VR content is in development. So I do count that under the VR releases. The weird thing about Resident Evil 4 is technically, the VR version of that exists. It's just an exclusive for the Oculus Quest 2. Obviously, they're going to do this remaster and then they're going to do a VR version, but I don't know if it's going to be a full game or if it's just going to be an experience, like certain parts of the game. I don't know what Capcom's contract is with Facebook as far as making Resident Evil 4 VR an exclusive to the Oculus Quest 2. Does that include the remake? I would think probably not since they are developing some content for the PlayStation. I'm also wondering, since they've already developed a VR version of the original game, and maybe that makes it a little bit easier to develop a VR version of the remake. So we'll have to see to what extent the VR version of that game is for the PSVR 2. But overall, I think it's pretty cool that they're doing a remake and they're gonna be doing some VR content for it. Like I said, hopefully it's the full game. But you know what is gonna be the full game? That's gonna be Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village. So they announced the VR version of that. So you can see that big lady, I guess, in VR. I don't know if people are into that. I guess if you're into that and you want to do that, then that's fine. So that's going to be on PSVR 2. I'm not sure if that's an exclusive, but it probably is if I had to guess because Resident Evil 7, the VR version, never came out on PC. So that's just been a PlayStation exclusive since it launched. That's the other good thing about this new headset. I wouldn't mind going back and playing Resident Evil 7 in VR with a better headset with better optics and of course a more powerful system. So I'm guessing that Resident Evil Village is probably gonna be a PlayStation exclusive, kinda like Resident Evil 7 was as far as the VR portion of the game. Now they also showed The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Retribution. It looked like one of those zombie type survival games in VR which has already been done. I mean it, it seemed fine. I'm not super excited for it but also I'm not a Walking Dead fan. I'm sure if someone probably has VR and watches Walking Dead then they might be excited for this game. I mean, it looks very polished, it looks good, so that's fine. Also, they announced No Man's Sky is coming to PSVR 2, which makes sense, because I think the original version had PSVR support. So obviously they're gonna do the new version with PSVR 2, which is probably gonna be a lot closer to the PC version of No Man's Sky and VR, especially with the new controllers and everything. And last but not least, of course, we have Horizon Call of the Mountain. So I still haven't gotten to the first Horizon game, Again, it looks cool, but I don't know what the openness of it. Like, is it going to be a free move game? Is it going to be on rails? There wasn't really enough to determine what kind of game it's going to be just based off of the trailer. So I'd definitely be interested in seeing more. If they do bow and arrow, though, like in VR, that'd be really cool. So that was about five games. One of them has already been on PSVR and PC before. So I expected to see some repeats. Last week, we talked about Sony saying they're going to have... 20 plus games at launch for PSVR 2. I think that they're doing pretty well as far as VR content. I'm curious to see what else they get to fill this lineup at this point. The only one that was kind of a repeat was No Man's Sky just because it's already been on PC VR and on PS4 PlayStation VR. The other thing I wanted to touch on is they are bringing Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales to PC. So Spider-Man I believe is launching this summer and then Miles Morales is gonna be in the fall. If you haven't played those games, those are probably some of my personal favorite PlayStation games. So I definitely recommend it. Like if you have a PC and you don't have a PlayStation, picking those up because they're both awesome. I'm probably not gonna rebuy them. I just beat them on PS5 not too long ago. And the PS5 load times are insane. I wouldn't be able to replicate those load times on PC. So I think I would prefer to actually play the PS5 version just because the insane load times and the graphics are still really good. But like I said, if you haven't checked them out before, those are two really good games. The other thing I want to touch on, they did show Stray, that game where you play as a cat, the Annapurna game. Of course, also coming to PC. But the thing that was important about this and why I'm even talking about it is 
they mentioned that it was going to be included in their PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium tiers. So this is kind of the first game that's going to be launching on those tiers, kind of like Game Pass with other third-party games. So to me, this is probably the biggest announcement they've made so far as far as having new games on that service, even though it's you know not technically a first-party game. But at least they are working to get some day one games on this service. And I think just giving that information up front would have been fine. It would probably would have got more people excited for it. I am interested in this game. Like for me, that might be enough for me to at least try maybe the extra tier so I can play straight because the game looks interesting. So we'll have to see going forward after the service launches worldwide, how many of these type of deals they do with third parties and what the time frame is for us to get their first party games on the service. But I just thought it was interesting that we kind of got our first day one launch <laughs> PlayStation extra and premium tier game announced at this state of play. So there was plenty of other stuff with the state of play, like Street Fighter 6 and some other games that I'm not really gonna touch on. I'm mainly focused on the VR and the PC stuff, but it's not that long, it's like 28 minutes. I definitely recommend to go watch the full thing if you haven't seen it. The next thing I actually wanna touch on is Madden. So I don't know how many of y'all play Madden football. I used to play a lot when I was younger. I don't really follow football or play football games anymore. But of course, the games have been named after John Madden who passed away last year, so this year, they're going to honor him by actually putting him on the cover. They're also going to be including him as the coach. I just wanted to stop and say that that's pretty cool, especially someone that's been a prominent figure in football and in those games. It's awesome that they're honoring him. I mean, you know, it is a game with his name, Zay Cordes, so I expected it, but I'm glad to see that EA is actually doing something other than just putting him on the cover. They're actually including him in the game in a meaningful way along with some of his commentary, I believe, as well. So I'll give props to EA for honoring his legacy in that way. All right, so let's hop into some more good news before we hop into the bad news. So if you like the first Sega Genesis Mini, apparently Sega is releasing the Sega Mega Drive Mini 2 in Japan, which most likely means it will come over to the US at some point as the Genesis Mini. It's gonna have 50 games, including Sonic CD. So that's gonna be up there. And the picture it has a little CD add-on. Can we get that in America this time? Because we didn't get the little add-on thing last time in America. I want a little CD add-on, okay? I'll be willing to buy another one of these things because I really love the first Genesis Mini. If you just give me the little CD add-on. If I want the little CD add-on thing in the US, then I'm not gonna buy it. I mean, I'm still gonna buy it, but I'm gonna be upset about it. But yeah, hopefully they release this in the US. I'll be excited to see what games they put up here because like I said, the first one was pretty awesome. So I am a huge fan of the mini systems, except for the PlayStation one. The PlayStation Tragic was just tragic for everyone involved, including Sony. Speaking of tragic, there is a tragic news related to the Steam Deck. There is a delay going on, but luckily it's not a delay that's gonna affect the core hardware, meaning that people are still gonna get their Steam Decks, I would say on time, but you know, in the expected time. I only got a month until I'm in my window. Only got a month. Tired of waiting. Sorry, got sidetracked. But the Steam Deck dock has been delayed due to a part shortage. They did say that it was related to COVID. But since the dock is coming from a different factory, it's not going to affect the shipments of, you know, the actual Steam Deck. So we should be fine there. It's just if you're waiting for the official dock, then there's going to be a delay. Which, I mean, the dock would be nice to have as like a stand for that, you know, you could charge and plug in HDMI or whatever, but you can pretty much get any USB-C dock and use it with the Steam Deck anyway. So to me, it's not that big of a deal unless you for some reason want the official one. But what I'm about to do is dock and bring this spaceship of news back to its home planet, which is ending this video. I don't even know where that was supposed to go, but it went somewhere. But let me know what you think in the comments. What'd you think of Sony's state of play? Are you excited for the Sega Genesis Mini 2? And are you disappointed with the Steam Deck dock being delayed? Again, let me know. I'm bringing this video to a conclusion, but if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification to get notified when I drop a video on Sundays and Wednesdays. And I always do at least two things at the same time. Peace.